This year for retro handhelds has been crazy. I did not predict that we would see so many launches, especially after a brutal couple of years for the economy. This year has given us probably far too many handhelds to choose from, making buying decisions even harder for those new to the scene. But being new to the scene actually has advantages because the power and overall experience of these devices has grown considerably in just 12 months to a point that handhelds under $200 can now emulate GameCube and PS2 games. It's truly a great time to jump in. And with that said, I want to share with you my personal favorite retro handhelds of the year in hopes it helps you make an informed buying decision. But before I do, I would like to mention that our premium coffee table book, A Handheld History, is still in stock. A book that we crafted this year in collaboration with Lost in Cult to pay respects to our ever-growing love for the handheld industry. It's the book I have always wanted, and again, this year has been so crazy for handhelds, alongside giving me this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to make my dream book about these portable devices that I absolutely love. So there's links below for those interested in snagging a copy, and now let's jump in and take a look at the 10 best retro handhelds of 2022. This is a handheld that has been teased for many months, and lucky for us, the creator behind this device sent us out an early development sample to share with you in this video. And let's just say, I'm impressed. The KT-R1 features a MediaTek G99 processor, a CPU typically found in high-end smartphones. There's up to eight gigabytes of RAM, a 4.5 inch IPS display with a resolution of 1620 by 1080 and 5,000 milliamps of battery. On paper, it's a beast and in the hand, it's a beast. This is still in production, but I was told additions will range from $169 to $259 with a metal shell adding approximately 50 bucks to the price tag. In terms of design, the handheld feels a delight to play on, especially the metal editions. It adds weight, durability, and gives it a premium touch. The team behind this device is also giving the customer a choice on where they prefer the D-pad to be located, making two variations of each device, which is something I haven't seen before. In terms of power, it runs on Android 12, and thanks to the impressive specs, it can run most consoles up to and including PS2 games. This is a truly pocketable handheld that can emulate PS2 games fluidly, making it the first time this year that a handheld of this size and price capable of this performance in your pocket. It's an insight into what 2023 will bring. Yes, this handheld isn't perfect, and I'll likely explain that in an article as this is the pre-production sample, so I can't properly review it. But nonetheless, it's in this video to give you an insight into what's to come and to keep an eye out for the KT-R1. It's truly an impressive device. The Evercade EXP was launched just a few days ago and I was delighted to see that it has greatly improved on the first Evercade handheld launched in early 2022. This device uses cartridges instead of emulation applications. The Evercade takes a step back to the good old days when you could collect games, trade them with friends, read manuals, and blow the dust out of cartridges. They have a library of over 300 games to discover from well-known developers such as Bandai Namco, Capcom, Atari, Intellivision, and more, allowing you to explore old games in an authentic way without the troubles of feeling naughty when you download ROMs from random websites that we, we don't do. We, we don't do that. No, we don't do that, do we? No. The build quality is great, with an impeccable D-pad, perfect for old school fighters. It even has two action buttons below that so you can play in tape mode, something which many handhelds can't do. Your library of games will be presented in a stunning user interface with pre-loaded Capcom games available on all Evercade EXPs. The shoulder buttons and the rounded long aesthetic make the handheld a pleasure to play on. And although there's not every retro game to choose from because of declined licensing agreements, there's still many to choose from to keep you occupied. It's a great handheld for those wanting a nostalgic touch and to be able to collect and trade cartridges with friends like the good old days, all while supporting retro developers in an organic and official way. The Evercade team have really made an awesome handheld here. 
fair play. The Funky S was featured in last year's Best Retro Handheld video and again this year because quite simply, I love it and I want to see more of these miniature handhelds on the market next year. For those that have never heard of the handheld, it's basically the world's smallest clamshell handheld designed by a small team of passionate handheld fans. At just 65 euro, it makes a great gift or a small treat for yourself this Christmas. You're probably wondering, Brandon, what? What can it do? Well, to my surprise, it can emulate most of your retro games up to and including PlayStation 1, allowing you to play Crash Bandicoot quite literally on your keychain, something I didn't think I would ever say. It's certainly not a device you can play on for hours on end, but it's my go-to when I need to wait around at the bus stop or at a train station for 20 minutes or so. It's been built with care and quality in mind, so it's not going to snap when you sneeze while playing, and the super bright display helps with viewing the tiny 1.5 inch display. More companies like this need to appear. Companies that have a genuine passion for handhelds that helps the customer when needed and supplies a great quality product swiftly. It's an adorable handheld with plenty of colors to choose from, and I'm hoping the funky team starts launching different consoles, perhaps a miniature Game Boy Advance. That would be pretty awesome. Please, pretty please. A handheld that truly innovated this year is the Playdate. And even though they are having some issues shipping to their customers in time, it's a delightful, fun handheld that has innovated in a way that no other handheld has done before. The Playdate primarily uses a crank to play games, that's right, a crank, a mechanism that pops out and twists, allowing you to play games like never before. These games are typically released in seasons and automatically drop onto your console via Wi-Fi when available. These games are created by well-known developers in the space and each have a unique way of using the crank. It's truly an incredible way to play and explore games. And the handheld gives us an indie charm that makes it somehow lovable. Panic, the company behind it, have also made it extremely high quality, even down to the metal crank and minimal button design. Although the screen can be annoying to view at night, it does add to the unique retro charm of the device. They made it hyper reflective, so increased visibility, which is nice in the day, but I will admit gets a little tricky at night if that's when you tend to play on games. It's a great handheld for any collector wanting to try something new and to explore indie retro games in a way that has never been done before. Consoles like this that innovate in the space deserve to be in the spotlight as they push the industry forward when many others simply rinse and repeat with very little innovation. The A and Odin launched in early 2022 and was one of the first handhelds in a long time to shake up the scene. The company Aeon came out of nowhere and many were hesitant to back it because let's be honest, this industry is shady at the best of times. But those who did back it were greeted with a handheld that could do exactly what it said it could do. And that was high-end GameCube performance for under $199, something that hadn't been done before. They packed this up into a superb design with LED lights, a large six inch display, Android 10, ergonomic grips, and impressive specs with internal cooling. It quite literally changed the playing field and all of the competitors in the space soon realized that they had to keep up and adjust prices or be left behind. Android made it easy to navigate, especially with a large touchscreen display. And because emulation apps are free and easy to install, it opened itself up to average gamers who have never touched emulation before, all for an affordable price. Although they created an incredible product, the demand of the handheld far outweighed the ability of, for the company to keep the promise of shipping times. Some customers who pre-ordered the device had to wait almost a year to get their hands on one, which is, in my opinion, just absolutely ludicrous. And that, unfortunately, is one of the major issues with the device. It's so good that you typically need to wait months for it. As of this video, things are speeding up and they are releasing different variations, but I would be lying if I said a and are over their head with distribution at this moment in time. It wouldn't be a top 10 without one of the most highly anticipated handhelds of the year, the Analog Pocket, a handheld that modernized the original Game Boy in a way that preserves gaming history. 
At first, it launched as a console that could play your Game Boy cartridges, and with the help of some adapters, you could get other cartridges working on it, such as Game Gear games, for example. But it really turned into an invaluable handheld when it launched its open FPGA feature, which allows you to install emulator cores, giving gamers access to play their own ROMs on the device as they please. This evolved the Pocket from a Game Boy into a premium handheld emulator that could play a wide number of games from a wide number of retro consoles. NES, SNES, Sega Genesis and more are now available on the analog pocket, making the handheld even more sought after. This comes from Analog's announcement to want to preserve gaming history and allow their customers to do what they'd like with their product. I'll be honest, this wasn't expected, but it was thoroughly appreciated and it's now one of my favorite handhelds of all time. The quality of the device is like nothing I have seen on a handheld and although analog support and customer service is a little bit robotic and slow, the device is quite literally close to flawless. It's an incredible device that I can't put down and most importantly, it's a device that stands for something great all while feeling like an old classic Game Boy. The Retroid Pocket 3 Plus was an unexpected release, especially when you consider the original Retroid Pocket 3 launched just a couple of months before. You can hear about my concerning thoughts in the full review, which there are links below. You know, their marketing stunts wasn't really appreciated, but I'll put those thoughts aside for this video. Go Retroid is renowned for creating some of the most affordable handhelds on the market, and the 3 Plus is by far one of the best handhelds of the year for those wanting the best bang for your bucks in terms of performance and build quality. They have designed this to fit in the hand. Naturally, it features a 4.7 inch touchscreen display, which helps navigate the Android OS. It has perfectly stacked shoulder buttons, and they've kept it as thin as possible, making it light and portable. It features a pretty powerful Unisoc T618 chip too, partnered with four gigabytes of RAM. This handheld can emulate basically all PSP games, GameCube games, and a handful of PS2 games quite easily, making it feel like a hacked mini Switch Lite from the future. Go Retroid has also made it easy for newcomers to understand as they automatically download all of the emulators for you when you turn it on out of the box. All you have to do is add your own ROMs and you're quite literally just ready to go. It's a magical handheld that is incredibly easy to set up, offers Android capabilities such as the Play Store and game streaming, plus it pushed the boundaries of affordable emulation coming in at just $150. Go Retroid has always been aggressive with their pricing strategy and it's got them to where they are today. One of the best retro Chinese handheld manufacturers on the market. They pushed the industry forward and even though their past marketing stunts have been a little shady, their products stand the test of time and always offer something new. Although many would deem the Steam Deck as a portable PC, I can't not feature it in this video because simply it's the best handheld emulator, period. The sheer power this device has for just $399 is like nothing on the market. It outperforms $1,000 gaming PC handhelds and because it has a community of millions willing to help those interested in using it for emulation, it again opens it up to a much broader audience. Steam Deck offers frequent updates, ships their products instantly, has a massive customer service team, and the product is, again, close to flawless, even if it feels like you're playing with King Kong's big toe. Yes, it's big, and the battery life pretty damn terrible, but that doesn't mean you can't have fun emulating your retro games. It's as easy as stalling EmuDeck and adding your ROMs. Once that's done, you can emulate a wide number of retro consoles, including Dreamcast, GameCube, and most PS2 games, making it an all-round gaming behemoth when you combine it with your Steam library. And that's where the magic lies. It's an all-round flawless gaming machine. It can play your latest AAA games and your harder to emulate retro consoles from the past in a semi-portable form factor. 
It's the device that will last for years to come and one many flock to for ease of use thanks to the never ending plethora of guides and community content. If you want a handheld that can do everything, the Steam Deck is the one to go for. Just take into consideration the size, weight and battery life as that's its only current limitation. The RG353M is my personal favorite retro handheld of the year, primarily because it's genuinely a great portable console, but also because I have a sentimental history with this tiny metal device. The previous iterations that stem back many years is what got me genuinely interested in the handheld emulator scene. It's what pushed me to make more and more content about these beautiful devices. And thankfully, Ambronic has simply refined and upgraded this handheld over the years to make it better and better. Sadly though, Ambronic have had a rough year. The majority of the consoles that they have launched have cut corners in many ways. And it's why it's the only Ambronic handheld in this video, which is surprising because they have launched an insane amount of devices this year. But what makes this handheld so great is that they simply haven't rushed it. They have kept their lane and created the best metal retro handheld of all time. They've made it slimmer, added a slightly more powerful chip, they have upgraded to hall joysticks and kept the stunning metal shell that makes it resistant to bumps, scratches or probably bullets. This can emulate all retro consoles up to and including Dreamcast for $145. It makes it an incredibly powerful pocket friendly device that does everything I want on this 3.5 inch screen. For me personally, this can do everything I need it to on a size that is perfect for travel and everyday use. It can't emulate GameCube or PS2 games, but for that you'd need a much larger screen to enjoy the gaming experience in my opinion. This is peak gaming for those wanting Dreamcast and under, and it's all wrapped in a metal shell, making it feel like you're playing on Optimus Prime's butt cheeks. Perfect. And last but not least, Retro Dodo's best retro handheld of 2022 is the Mayu Mini, a perfect miniature handheld that has niched itself in such a way that it has dominated the under $100 market for most of the year, selling tens if not hundreds of thousands of units worldwide. It's so wanted that Mayu keeps selling out of them in just a few minutes when they add stock to their AliExpress page. However, I do believe throughout 2023, this will become a more readily available handheld, so please keep checking the links below as I'll refresh them every time new stock drops. The Mayu Mini is a very simple, reliable device and due to its pocket friendly size, it's always my go-to for short travel trips away from home. It features a 2.8 inch IPS display, a 1.2 gigahertz CPU and a whopping 128 megabytes of RAM. But as my girlfriend says, it's not about the size, it's about how you use it. And the Mayu Mini certainly packs a punch for its size. The screen is also the perfect resolution for retro games, coming in at 640 by 480. And because all of those pixels are so compact, it makes the gameplay quality look incredibly crispy. It's basically a mini Game Boy with shoulder buttons that can emulate most of your games up to and including PlayStation 1. The included OS is pretty average, but simple enough for a child to use, not overcomplicating the process between turning it on and playing your games. On a single charge, it can last up to four hours playing games, which is the perfect amount of time for a long train journey or chipping at it away through the day. It's just an all round perfect mini handheld that attracts all handheld enthusiasts. And as we move into 2023, I think we will see many wanting to compete with this device. More power won't do it any good because even text on the PlayStation 1 games can be a little awkward to read. So in reality, all that can be tweaked is the OS and the build quality to make it better. I didn't think I needed it until I bought one, and if I had to count all of the hours spent on the devices featured in this video, the Mayu Mini is the clear winner because it's simply a reliable, portable device with great build quality. What a year it has been. If any of these devices tickle your fancy, there are links below to snag them. And I want to take this time to say a big thank you to all of you who have viewed our content this year. You bless me with this opportunity to test these products out for a living and have given me the chance to craft my dream book about this industry. So for that, I can't thank you enough and I wish you a very Merry Christmas 
and a happy new year.